Hey, hello, New Bethel and family. How y'all doing? This is Brother Rob, and I'm here to just facilitate our uh, Sunday school lesson that we're going to be doing. Um, I welcome everybody in. This is a, man, this is a lesson and I'm a little excited about because um, as I got into it, you know how you you're, you start doing some teaching and you start doing some studying and exploring and you start coming up with more questions and answers. <laughs> so it got that good to me. But um, hey, y'all just um, put on your seatbelt and I think we're going to have a good time with this. Um, this is a lesson here about Gideon and the strength of honesty. We want to give big praise to God. Thank God for everything and opportunity just to minister again. We give um, a big shout out to Pastor Brady, Lady Angela, the New Bethel family, all the saints that will be joining us together today just to kind of get into a lesson and see what we can pull out of it. So um, I'm excited about it. And we just want to go before the Lord before we get started and ask the blessing for Thank you, Lord God, for just blessing us on another day, Lord God, giving us everything we need, Lord God, to be successful, to live godly lives, Lord God, to giving us strength and protection, keeping us, Lord God, inspiration, Lord God. We thank you for the filling and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that lead and guide us, Lord God, daily. And we just give you all the praise and adoration, Lord God. I pray that I can sink back while you move forward and with this lesson and teaching, blessing your people, Lord God, with um, new information, um, things to, to think about, things that'll help us kind of just go to another level, Lord God, in you, Lord God, in our spiritual walk, Lord God, as we enjoy this um, journey, Lord God, we just thank you and give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As I was kind of getting together, to um, this is one of those lessons that I'm really missing doing this in person because as I thought about this lesson, I started thinking about more perspectives than my own. I felt like I needed that for this to really be successful. So we're not recording live, but what I ended up doing, and you can still put things in the chat to share, of course, um, but I ended up having to enlist some of my family and friends who are saved and ask them about this subject. And let me, as I try to set up the um, picture that we're going to be um, presenting here and going into the lesson in more detail, the question came up about when we're talking about honesty. I know what it meant to me, but I, I kind of just started presenting out in a chat group with friends and family, asking them, what is honesty to you? Kind of what, what, what is its purpose and why is it really imperative in our relationships? So as I enlisted help from some of the fam, some of my best friends, you know, you know, I asked um, my buddy that I went to high school with, one of my best friends from way back, Lamont. He said, honesty means telling the truth in a situation regardless of the consequences. It also means giving your genuine viewpoint when discussing an issue. The purpose of being honest is to build trust and confidence with others and to work towards a positive solution, even when that honesty is uncomfortable and painful. My sister Shannon said it like this. I would say that honesty is defined as truthfulness in any regard. It is absolutely imperative in any relationship because it allows trust and confidence. When a person is honest with you, you can trust what is said and have confidence in their integrity. My uncle Greg said this and it started hitting really close to home here. It says, Honesty should start with a self-honesty as a foundation. Look at who we want to be, where we want to go, and what's important to us helps in our relationships. So self-respect and respect for others is also very important in true honesty. My son-in-law, 
Mr. Mayhew, he put it like this. He said he feels that it's a fun fundamental aspect of healthy relationships. It fosters trust, communication, and mutual respect between individuals. It allows for open and authentic dialogue. And honesty is the foundation of a healthy self-image and self-esteem. And he quoted Proverbs 12, 22, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in the people who are trustworthy. And this last statement, and I have more that I'm gonna share too, but this comes from a, a teenager, a high schooler, but he, he spoke beyond his years here. He said, we live in a society where people fear vulnerability, sorry, vulnerability because they feel it makes them seem weak in some way. When in reality, it's not, it, it not only makes you stronger, but it also makes the relationships you have stronger. Same with honesty. Some people are scared to be fully honest with themselves and others because they're scared of what people might think of them. These are just some perspectives from the human point of view and our, as we experience life and we share in relationships with each other, what honesty is. But you know, I'm the, the coach or the teacher, so I have to kind of push a little bit further into the word to see what the Bible says, what the word of God says about honesty to kind of get us into a place that we can really succeed. So um, as we move forward and share here, and I want to also um, bring up that in the meantime of us doing all the, here we go, forgive me here, going over this um, PowerPoint presentation. And it basically is here where the lesson here, Gideon and the strength of honesty. I even loved the, um, oh, I'm having fun with my computer here. I'm trying to share this with y'all. Let me get this down here. I even love the fact that with this lesson, it says the strength of honesty. And there's something about even the title that may be kind of um, get to a place where the strength of honesty, I just, it's something about it that I just loved. And it, it was, it just kind of, kind of coaxed me on. And for the perspective, we asked about the questions and things. And I started the things that it kind of stuck out for me was what honesty was. And this is before I did the study and I just, you know, did my personal kind of thoughts on it. It's an evaluation. I used to be um, taught when in school that you don't use a word in defining the word. So I don't want to say it's an honest evaluation, but let's say it's a sober evaluation. And it's not skewed by personal motives or fear. So that's to me what I thought kind of what honesty was in a nutshell. Honesty, as we look into the word, as I start to really dig into it, because it was almost like, okay, what comes first, the the chicken or the egg? You know that old saying in the world, where does what is it? Honesty is it come before wisdom, is or if, if it's um, honesty uh, a fruit that comes with wisdom? And as I started to study the word here, as you see in Philippians four and eight. New King James Version, it says here, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, so we see synonymous with honesty is the truth, or true, or sometimes the word pure. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, mark that, any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So as I started looking more and more into this, it, it became more clear that honesty is a heart attitude. Think about it like this. 
before a situation even happens, what is your mind set? What is it your mind state? Before God even speaks to you, what's your attitude, your heart's attitude? Because I believe what determines the things that happen next kind of show really our motive of what really is motivating our situation and our circumstance. Honesty is the disposition or mindset of truth. That's what I found. It's like it's always pointed. It's like honesty is not just connected to a feeling in the soul, but it's a value in your heart or spirit. So our conscience is always pointing north, spiritually, knowing right from wrong. And if we value beyond feelings, beyond what you think about something, and I love how Pastor Brady, he said it on the other week, when he was talking about there's a difference between, I believe this was during the Wednesday night um, um, educational initiative, where there's a difference between your opinion in your thought process. I thought that was so golden and brilliant because that is so true. Sometimes we have an opinion of something and it's just a feeling. It's really based on a feeling many times. It's not sometimes just, and it can be based on some information that we've looked over over time. But what I like about what Pastor Brady said, there's a difference between that opinion, which is usually more feeling oriented but your thought process is something you've tested over time. It's something you've gone over. And it's something that usually is based on something bigger than you, an investigation on what truth is concerning a situation. And that's where honesty is. So it's almost like there's a value in place already in a mindset, in a mind frame that is already. So when the situation comes, we're reacting with honesty. We're reacting like it says in Philippians, think on these things. Think about that. Think on these things. So there should be a mindset before there's any issue, before there's any problem, before the day starts, we should be spiritually geared in honesty. Hope there's an amen out there. <laughs> Honesty is a heart attitude. James 3, 14 through 17. This is the amplified version reading from here. But if you have bitter jealousy and self and selfish ambitions in your hearts, do not be arrogant and as a result be in defiance of the truth. Mark that defiance of the truth. We're talking about honesty. This superficial wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, secular, natural, unspiritual, even demonic. 16, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder, unrest, rebellion, sounds like the world, doesn't it? And every evil thing and morally degrading practice. But wait. 17 saves a day, but the wisdom from above is first pure, morally and spiritually undefiled. I highlighted this because honesty is the first and fundamental of wisdom. It's the basics. It's the basics. It's it's not complex. It's First and fourth, front row, you do things honestly and you value that to a point where it transcends your feelings on a situation even. But it says first is pure, then peace loving, courteous, considerate, gentle, reasonable, and willing to listen. Sounds like somebody familiar, huh? Full of compassion and good fruits. It is unwavering without self-righteousness, hypocrisy, 
and serving, self-serving guile. Sounds a lot like Jesus. So the first fundamental thing of wisdom, and I just, it says it's pure, morally and spiritually undefiled. I just take that as honesty there. You see in these cards, and I and I meant to bring out some cards just to, um, but you can use your imagination. I brought out these pictures where the thing is, we learn how to play these games. You, you agree to sit down at a table with somebody and play a game, but you hide your cards. Each of you are hiding your cards from the other one. And it has strategy within it, but it's a strategy that serves self. And you even just like these cards, they get bent inward. Just like we do when, when we are self-serving, the opposite of honesty, we are just like it says in verses 14 through 16, when it talks about the worldly wisdom, we learn to play a game of this game of life with our cards held close to us, where the, out, the outsiders, we might be singing, sitting at the table with them, but they don't know what we have. And we keep those as they say guarded close to our chest. But when it comes to honesty, when you sit down at the table and agree to sit down at the table with another, you show your cards. You don't hide them. The highs, the lows, they're shown, they're shared. As it was said earlier, we're vulnerable. We open up on these things, good and bad. That's what honesty is about. Now, it does come with wisdom. We don't just go and just do things, you know, just to be able to, you know, you don't share everything with everybody, right? But with those that you've agreed to sit down at the table with and build relationship with, we share and we don't hide these things because they've built, and that's how the trust is earned. John 3, 19 through 21, familiar scripture because we're familiar with John 3 and 16. But as it goes further, it says, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly. Sounds like honesty, right? So it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So this is a question. Are we seeking truth? I give to you, if you are having a debate with someone and a conversation and it's going back and forth, back and forth with no resolution, if you find out that person is not seeking truth, I might tell you, just go ahead and end that conversation because you're wasting your time. If you're dealing with people that are not seeking truth, where is this going? <laughs> Where is this conversation really going to go? We're just going to be going back and forth, back and forth. We can't agree. We can't agree because both sides are not seeking truth. That's what honesty is about. Reality versus false narratives. Fake news. Fake news and didn't just start during the pandemic and during this, um, you know, these going between the Republicans and Democrats and Trump being in office. Fake news was way before that. That was in the garden. Y'all remember, right? Fake news. Did God really say this? Satan's been spinning since the beginning. Reality versus a false narrative. 
reality, honesty will always face reality. Matter of fact, without honesty, we'll never deal with what's really going on. The heart and crux of the matter. Without honesty, we, we can't even start with reality because there's a fake situation being dealt with and put up with. That's how important honesty is. If we are honest, we will make the needed adjustments. That's what honesty does. It sees what is going on and seeing the truth, no matter how I feel about the situation, if I see that I'm doing something wrong, I need to make the adjustment. Amen? Are we seeking truth? Now we're going to get into the meat of the actual lesson with Gideon. The reflection meets the image bearer. I like to say it just like this because, well, we'll get into this. You, you'll see here. Judges 6, 11 through 21. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak of Oprah that belonged to Joash the Razorite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in the wine press to keep it from the Midians or the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. I feel that Gideon has always got a bad rap for being in the wine press because he's always painted as this coward because they say he was hiding in the wine press. I like to think of it this way. He was hiding the wheat because that's where the Midianites were coming and they were raiding all the produce. So to keep the produce that was grown, he said, well, let me be, be wise about this situation. Let me go somewhere where it's not going to be easily seen. So he went down into the wine press, and then that's where he beat and threshed out the wheat. But then when God says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. This is when God is now trying to bring Gideon to who, who he has been called to be. And this identity is pictured here on this picture here. You see him, this is the end story where they're, they have the horns, the torches, you see the broken pottery on the ground, the mighty warrior. But then you see in 13, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders? that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. One thing I give a lot of credit to because the Lord says the, he is with Gideon, but then Gideon says, but the, is the Lord with us? He was so community centered about like pastor talked about the them on this past Sunday, the them. He was so, he was so them oriented with his community. So when the Lord says, I am with you, but he says, well, Lord, if you was with us, why is all this happening? But the thing is, sometimes we can be so entrenched in our situation and what we're going on through, we can forget history. It's something about doubt and fear that makes us forget what God has done or even what we have done. Because there was a history there going on and why the people of Israel were even found in this situation. They didn't just get here because they were being honest. They were being dishonest with the Lord and that trickle down effect made its way into their lives. You see this picture here, he's in the, the wine press, threshing wheat, and the Lord appears above him. The Lord always calls us higher from our situation to where, let's go back to this picture. He calls us what we are. We see where we're at. He calls us 
where we are and where we're, we should be, what he sees us to be, but we see ourselves where we're at. Verse 14, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of the Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But then, of course, Gideon continues on, pardon me, Lord, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. So he's coming from his point of view. This is the way my world works, Lord. I am from the smallest clan, and I'm the youngest in my family. Do you have the right person? So Gideon, from being from small esteem, but he still was honest. So he was dealing with God and trying to take all of this in. But the thing is, he had an honest heart because he wasn't trying to make he wasn't trying to make excuses, but he's trying to understand where God is coming from. Do you have the right person, Lord? Have you ever thought that to yourself when God revealed that dream and that vision to you? You're like, do you have the right person, Lord? Verse 16, the Lord answered, I will be with you and you will strike down the Midianites, leaving none alive. 17, Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Isn't it beautiful that God will condescend to our situation and meet us where we're at? It's not like he didn't have anything to do, right? He's only the master of the universe, managing everything in existence. <laughs> the Lord said, I will wait until you return. And I think it's so beautiful because it paints a picture of the Lord and how he deals with us and how he waits on us continuously, no matter where we're at in our growth in maturity with him. He's always waiting on us until we come back and we get to that place. Because what we have to realize, just like Gideon, he had to unlearn some things that he was believing about himself. And he had to learn what God was putting and downloading into him. So there had to be a, a trade-off taking in what God is saying but there had to be a dumping of the old image, the old way of thinking of who he was, the weakest clan, the youngest in his family, the least of the least. That's how he had an image of himself. But God said he was a mighty warrior. And as Gideon went inside, prepared the young goat and went forth and forth on, and I'm going to skip forward. And the angel of God said, take the meat and the oven leavened bread place them on a rock and pour out the broth and Gideon did so. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread with the tip of the staff that was in his hand. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread and the angel of the Lord disappeared. And you see in the picture here, a little um, picture of that story, what's going on. The reflection meets the image bearer. We get our true identity from God. You hear me? We get our true identity from God and where, where honesty is a bridge is where we meet the image bearer. We meet God, but we're just the reflection of God. We were made in his image, but the two can meet together when we are dealing in honesty. When we're honest about our situation, we're not putting up a front of who we think we are or who we used to be back in the day. We're not living off of those past glory days, but we, we know who we are before God. And we know none of that stuff means anything. To deal with reality, I have to be honest and make the adjustment. And now, just like Gideon did, he started taking in God and his view 
of Gideon and letting go of his view of himself. I hope this is going over well. Psalms 51 and 6. You want me to be completely truthful, desire truth, faithfulness in my inward parts. So teach me wisdom and secretly you will make me know wisdom. That's Psalms 51 and 6. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Another one of my friends here that I used to work with, used to be my supervisor, and we used to be communicating for years. And when I asked him about what honesty is, it says, honesty, he said that honesty is the barometer of truth. And I said, man, hmm. I had to think about that. I said, man, that, that sounds real good. I said, and the Lord put it on my spirit to look up that word. What is a barometer? I know I've heard of it before, but I really, I was like, let me look this up. And I thought it was interesting. But he also says, I won't lie to you and tell you what you want to hear. This is Demetrius talking about his belief and his, um, of his understanding of what honesty is. But honesty needs to come from a place of love because the truth can hurt. <laughs> we all know this. <laughs> the truth can hurt. But when we're with an honest place, coming from that place, we'll deal with it and make the adjustment if we see that there's some truth to the matter. There's some something wrong with it. I need to make an adjustment. But when I looked up the definition of what a barometer it was, I, I was like, okay, this was prophetic. An instrument, an instrument, excuse me, measuring atmospheric pressure so we're already my mind is atmospheric we're talking about the heavenlies right used especially in forecasting now remember we were talking about earlier and i didn't plan any of this honesty is a, a state of mind it's what's going on before a situation even comes upon you it's what's going on before god even speaks to you about the situation if you're in a place of honesty, so you're forecasting the weather. So it helps, honesty is going to help me be in a place to no matter what's coming in the future. And then it says, and determining altitude. So I said, oh my God. I said, wow. An instrument measuring atmospheric pressure used especially in forecasting the weather and determining altitude. So will honesty determine how high I go? I think it will, according to the word of God, will it determine how much wisdom I can really get in? Honesty from the word is the, the fundamental. It, you, you're seeking after what's pure, unadulterated, unsullied, nothing evil in it. And what fellowship can light have with darkness. You know, we're talking about this honesty and truth seeking and being completely truthful, as it's saying here. It's a thing that really kind of gets me thinking like, wow, how important is our attitude, our mind state before these things pop off? before these situations even come and they're right in our lap, how important our mind state is. I, and, and I never thought about it in this particular um, framework before. God gives that beautiful confirmation and Gideon fleeces the Lord. And we, you can read this on Judges 6, 36 through 40, where now Gideon is saying, okay, I need to be sure this is God speaking. Even after I've seen the Lord appear and disappear, he, he made the offering catch fire and burn and disappeared right before my eyes. But now I need to be sure because I need to be beyond doubt that, okay, this is God. And it all starts making sense because we know how the, the, the warriors were dwindled down to the 300. 
And to me, every time God is taking away warriors, he said, this, that's too many. That's too many. You have too many. I won't get the glory with all these men. And he whittles them down from, I believe, 10,000 or more to 300. And every time I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, man, Gideon has to be going back. He's like, man, remember the fleece. Remember when there was dew all over the ground, but the fleece was dry. Remember, God showed me. Now, remember, I even said, now let's reverse it. Let's make the ground dry and the, the fleece just dripping with dew where you have to wring it out. Boom. God gave confirmation. God gave confirmation before that. The angel of the Lord. So when these things, these th when God tells you something that's so strange and so unusual and it doesn't make sense, but you've confirmed his word and you know there's nothing like hearing from God. There ain't nothing like hearing from God and you know God has spoken to you. Gideon had to unlearn all the things that were taught. We talked about this already. The world would download so much stuff in us, so much junk, so much crap. And we can't help it sometimes. We just, it sticks to us. But when God starts to speak in our identity and who we are, we start to make that adjustment if our hearts are honest. Making the most of honesty. These are some of my um, family and friends. More thoughts about what honesty is. My cousin Lynn in Kentucky said it like this. Honesty is one of the foundations of how we live and who we are. It is a, a pinnacle of respect and succeeds us when we die. I loved when she said that because it made me think about how even after death, our name, our good name still speaks for us. I believe that's somewhere in Proverbs. I can't give you a verse right now. But then my wife Rochelle said it like this, honesty is honor and having virtue. She mentioned some things like righteousness and loyalty. Relationships can flourish when we are honest with ourselves. That's again, we have to be honest with ourselves before we're even with others in relationship or most of all with God. If I'm not honest with myself, God's not gonna even deal with me because what, what fellowship is, does light have with darkness? And talk about being unle unevenly yoked. If I'm not being honest with myself, how is God going to pour something into me if I'm not even facing this, the situation at hand? I'm going to be stuck perpetually. I might have been able to mature and grow and grow and grow. But if I get to right here and I'm not willing to be honest with something, I will never get past this. I will never get past it. I'll be stuck forever until I'm honest. And when I'm honest, I'm able to go to another level. Tiana, my cousin, said in California, honesty is imperative in a relationship because the relationship requires trust. You cannot have trust without honesty. They go hand in hand. Lastly, my daughter Jasmine, she said it like this, honesty requires vulnerability and vulnerability and authenticity are the only way we can truly connect. Wow. And the highest connection is with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, leading us to the Father, filling us with the Holy Spirit. Last verse here, James 1, 5 through 6. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith and with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. I want to thank you all for joining us with this, the strength of honesty. 
that that's, it's still it's something because something it's something that sometimes when we think of honesty we don't think of strength but i love how the um author of the um books that we're doing for the um sunday school put that the strength of honesty so god we just come before you asking that that strength be within us, Lord God, that you will, will, that we give you something to work with. Hallelujah, God. That without that, you can't even move beyond and I can't even grow anymore. So I'm just praying for the heart of honesty that I'm going to make adjustments when I see something's wrong with me that I'm going to not make excuses. I'm not going to point fingers. I'm not going to blackmail. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to try to tear down my brother or sister's stock to try to make my my stock price look better. That I'm going to be honest with myself and deal with my own junk, my own. Yes, Lord. So bless us to be those people you've called us to be in the name of Jesus. And let that fruit be multiplied. Let wisdom come to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all be blessed in the Lord. And we just thank you. Love y'all. Praise God. Amen.